Section 1. Characteristics of the atmosphere. The layer of gases that surround the Earth is called the atmosphere. The atmosphere is made up of a mixture of chemical elements and compounds that is commonly called air. The atmosphere protects, uh, protects Earth's surface from the sun's radiation and helps regulate the temperature of the Earth's surface. Composition of the atmosphere. As shown in figure, as the graph in figure 1 shows, most the most abundant element in the air are the gases nitrogen, oxygen, and argon. The composition of dry air is nearly the same everywhere on the Earth's surface and up to an altitude of about 80 kilometers. The two most abundant compounds in the air are the gases carbon dioxide and water vapor. In addition to containing gaseous elements and compounds, the atmosphere <clears throat> commonly carries various kinds of tiny solid particles such as dust and pollen. Nitrogen makes up about 78% of the Earth's atmosphere. Nitrogen in the atmosphere is maintained through a process called the nitrogen cycle. During the nitrogen cycle, nitrogen moves from the air to the soil, then to plants and animals, and eventually returns to the air, as shown in Figure 1. Nitrogen is removed from the air mainly by an action of nitrogen-fixing bacteria. <clears throat> These microscopic organisms live in the soil and in the roots of certain plants. The bacteria chemically changes nitrogen from the air into nitrogen compounds that are vital for the growth of all plants. When animals eat plants, nitrogen compounds enter the animal's bodies. Nitrogen compounds are then returned to the soil through animal waste or by the decay of dead organisms. Decay releases nitrogen back into the atmosphere. A similar nitrogen cycle takes place between marine organisms and ocean water. Oxygen in the atmosphere. Oxygen makes up about 21% of the Earth's atmosphere, as shown in Figure 2. Natural processes maintain a chemical balance of oxygen in the atmosphere. Animals, bacteria, and plants remove oxygen from the air as parts of the life process. Forest fires, the burning of fossil fuels, and weathering of some rocks also remove oxygen from the air. These processes would quickly use up most atmospheric oxygen and various processes that add oxygen to the air that did not take air did not take place. Land and ocean planet plants produce large quantities of oxygen in a process called photosynthesis. During photosynthesis, plants use sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to produce their food, and they release oxygen as a byproduct. The amount of oxygen produced by plants each year equals the amount consumed by all the animal life processes. Thus, the oxygen content of the air has not changed significantly for millions of years. Water vapor in the atmosphere. As water evaporates from ocean, lakes, streams, and soils, it enters the air, air as invisible gas water vapor. Plants and animals give off water vapor during transpiration, one of their life processes. But as water vapor enters the atmosphere, it is removed by a process of condensation and precipitation. The percentage of water vapor in the atmosphere varies depending on factors such as time of day, location, and season. Because the amount of water vapor in the air varies, the composition of the atmosphere is usually given as that of dry air. Dry air has less than 1% water vapor. Moist air contains as much as 4% water vapor. Ozone in the atmosphere. Although it is present only in small amounts, a form of oxygen called ozone is an important component of the atmosphere. The oxygen that we breathe, O2, has two atoms has two atoms per molecule but ozone O3 has three atoms ozone in the upper atmosphere forms the ozone layer which absorbs harmful ultraviolet radiation from the sun without the ozone layer living organisms would be severely damaged by the sun's ultraviolet rays unfortunately a number of human activities damage the ozone layer Compounds known as chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, which were per previously used in refrigerants and air, condition air conditioners, and exhaust compounds such as nitrogen oxide, break down ozone and have parts of, had and have caused parts of the ozone layer to weaken, as shown in Figure 3. 
In addition to containing gases, the atmosphere contains various tiny solid particles called particulates. Particulates can be volcanic dust, ash from fires, microscopic organisms, or mineral particles lifted from the soil by winds. Pollen from plants and particles, partic particles from meteors that have vaporized as vaporized are also particulates. When tiny drops of ocean water are tossed into the air as sea spray, the drops evaporate. Left behind in the air are tiny crystals of salt, another type of particulate. Four common sources of partic particulates are shown in figure four. Large heavy particulates remain in the atmosphere only briefly, but tiny particulates can remain suspended in the atmosphere for months or years. Atmospheric pressure. Gravity holds the gases of the atmosphere ne near the Earth's surface. As a result, the air molecules are compressed together and exert force on Earth's surface. The pressure exerted on the surface by the atmosphere is called atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure is exerted equally in all directions, up, down, and sideways. Earth's gravity keeps 99% of the total mass of the atmosphere within 32 kilometers of the Earth's surface. The remaining 1% extends upwards for hundreds of kilometers, but gets increasingly thinner at high altitudes, as shown in Figure 5. Because the pull of gravity is not as strong at higher altitudes, the air molecules are further apart and exert less pressure on each other at higher altitudes. Thus, the atmospheric pressure decreases as altitude increases. Atmospheric pressure also changes as a result of differences in temperature and in the amount of water vapor in the air. In general, as temperature increases, atmospheric pressure at the sea decreases, sea level decreases. The reason is that molecules move further apart when the air is heated, so fewer particles exert pressure on a given area, area and the pressure decreases. Similarly, Air that is can, contains a lot of water vapor is less dense than drier air because water vapor molecules have less mass than nitrogen or oxygen molecules do. The lighter water vapor molecules replace an equal number of heavier oxygen and nitrogen molecules, which makes the volume of air less. Meteorologists use three forms of atmospheric pressure. Atmospheres, millimeters, or inches of mercury and millibars, standard atmos atmospheric pressure, or one atmosphere, is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, or 1,000 millibars. The average atm atmospheric pressure at sea level is one atmosphere. Meteorologists measure atmospheric pressure by using an instrument called a barometer. <clears throat> mercurial barometers. Meteorologists use two types of barometers. One is a mercurial barometer a model which is shown in figure six. Atmospheric pressure on a liquid mercury in a well at the base of the barometer. The pressure holds the mercury up to a certain height inside the tube. The height of the mercury inside the tube varies with atmospheric pressure. The greater the atmospheric pressure is, the higher the mercury rises. Aneroid barometers. The type of barometer most commonly used today is called an aneroid barometer. Inside an aneroid barometer is a sealed metal container from which most of the air has been removed to form a partial vacuum. Changes in the atmosphere pressure causes the sides of the container to bend inward or bulge outward. These changes move a pointer on a scale. Aneroid barometers can be constructed to keep continuous record of atmospheric pressure. An aneroid barometer can also measure altitude above sea level. When used for this purpose, aneroid barometer is called an altimeter. The scale on an altimeter registers altitude instead of pressure. At high, at, at high altitudes, the atmosphere is less dense and exerts less pressure than, than at low altitudes. So a lower pressure reading can be interpreted as an increase in altitude reading. Layers of the atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere has a distinctive pattern of temperature changes which increase 
with increasing altitude as shown in figure 7. The temperature difference mainly results from how solar energy is absorbed as it moves through the atmosphere. Scientists identify four main layers in the atmosphere based on these differences. The troposphere, the atmospheric layer that is closest to the Earth's surface and in which nearly all weather occurs is called the troposphere. Almost all the water vapor and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is found in this layer. Temperature within the troposphere decreases as altitude increases because the air in the layer is heated from below by thermal energy that radiates from the Earth's surface. The temperature within the troposphere decreases at the average rate of 6.5 degrees Celsius per kilometer. As the distance from the Earth's surface increases, however, at an average altitude of 12 kilometers, the temperature stops decreasing. This zone is called the tropopause and represents the upper boundary of the troposphere. The altitude of this boundary varies with latitude and season. The stratosphere. The layer of the atmosphere called the stratosphere extends from the troposphere with an altitude nearly 50 kilometers. Almost all of the ozone in the atmosphere is concentrated in this layer. In the lower stratosphere, the temperature is almost a negative 60 degrees Celsius. In the upper stratosphere, the temperature increases, altitude increases, because air in the stratosphere is heated from above by the absorption of solar radiation by ozone. The temperature of the air in this layer rises steadily to a temperature of about 0 degrees Celsius at an altitude of about 50 kilometers above the Earth's surface. This zone, called the stratopause, marks the upper boundary of the stratosphere, the mesosphere, located above the stratopause and extending to an altitude of about 80 kilometers is the mesosphere. In this layer, the temperature decreases as altitude increases. The upper boundary of the mesosphere is called the mesopause, has an average temperature of nearly 90, negative 90 degrees Celsius, which is the coldest temperature in the atmosphere. Above this boundary, temperatures begin to increase. The thermosphere. The atmosphere layer above the mesopause is called the thermosphere. In the thermosphere, temperature increases steadily as altitude increases because nitrogen and oxygen atoms absorb solar radiation. Because air particles in the atmosphere are very far apart, they do not strike a thermometer often enough to produce an accurate temperature reading. Therefore, special instruments are readed. These instruments have recorded temperatures of more than a thousand degrees in the thermosphere. The lower region of the thermosphere at an altitude of 80 to 400 kilometers is commonly called the ionosphere. The ionosphere, in the ionosphere, solar radiation that is absorbed by the atmosphere gases cause the atoms of the gas molecules to lose electrons and to produce ions and free electrons. Interactions between the solar radiation and the ionosphere cause the phenomenon known as auroras, which are shown in figure eight. There are not enough, there's, there are not enough data about the temperature changes in the thermosphere to determine its upper boundary. However, above the ionosphere is a region where the Earth's atmosphere blends into almost complete vacuum of space. This zone of indefinite altitude is called the exosphere, extends for thousands of kilometers above the ionosphere. Temperature inversions. Any substance, any substance that is in the atmosphere and is harmful to people, animals, plants, or property is called an air pollutant. Today, the main source of air pollutant is burning of fossil fuels, such as coal and petroleum. As these fuels burn, they may release harmful chemical substances such as sulfur dioxide gas, hydrocarbons, nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxides, and lead into the air. Certain weather conditions can make air pollutants worse, worse such as conditions and temperature inversions. The layering of warm air on top of cold air Warm air, which is less dense than cool air, can trap cool, polluted air beneath it. In some areas, topography may make air pollution 
even worse by keeping the polluted inversion layer from dispersing. As shown in figure 9, under conditions in which air cannot circulate up and away from the area, trapped automobile exhaust gas can produce smog, a general term for air pollution that indicates a combination of smoke and fog. Air pollution can be controlled only by preventing the release of pollutants into the atmosphere. International, federal, and local laws have been passed to reduce the amount of air pollutants produced by automobiles and industries.